Lord. We're not here just for a service or just to sing songs, God. We're here to seek your face, the living God, the one true living God. Come on, you're the desire of our hearts, oh Lord. To be a sanctuary for you, Lord. Lord, prepare me to be a vessel in your hands for your use, Jesus. Father, Lord, I give you thanks, I give you praise. I exalt you, Lord. Let all the other names fade away. All the other names, apart from your name, O oh God, let the names, all the names fade away, God. Let all the other names fade away. Oh Lord, let all the other names fade away. Father, I worship you, Jesus. I give you praise, mighty God. You are God alone by yourself, Jesus. You need no man to be God. Balabushi 
Chegará você, dará de la baixada cara. E cozube a grande cara basate e da basuto bahanda. Menda la da música baiana cara da ba 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 ba. Yes Jesus. Consecrated to you. Take my lips, let it be consecrated for your youth, Jesus. Malande koziva kashe la bazondo le kabaranda yande kete la kusuta bako. Let it flow ceaseless to you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We give you thanks, mighty God. We enter your gate this afternoon with thanksgiving in our hearts. And into your court with praises, with songs of praises to you alone. Because you deserve it, Lord. Because you deserve it, Lord. Thank you, Father, for your diverse deliverances in our lives. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your compassion. Thank you for your loving kindness, O oh God, towards us. Thank you, Lord. I appreciate you, mighty God, for the privilege you've granted me again to stand on this platform, on this podium, to share your word, to stand in this place of prayer, to seek your face, O oh God, for divine intervention over any issue that have prevailed in our lives. Mighty God, you said in your word that you are God that hears and answers prayers. Father, thank you for giving an ear to our cry over time. Even on this day, I thank you because, oh God, you are set to birth again testimonies in the lives of your people. I give you all the glory. I give you all the honor. God that specializes in perfecting all that concerns us. Lord, I welcome you. In the atmosphere of today's midday prayer go ahead and begin to perfect whatever concerns your people whatever we've brought before you that is a concern we've seen you perfecting our concerns in the past lord i yet believe that even on this particular day you will yet perfect our concerns because wherever two or three are gathered in your name oh god you take delight to perfect what concerns them you take delight to speak to them. You take delight to offer direction to them. You take delight to even avail your shoulder for them to lean on. Father, I know I'm speaking to some people here. Perhaps the shoulders that I've been leaning on have been withdrawn. Ah, Baba, there is no time you have withdrawn your shoulders. You have always availed your shoulders. For your own to lean on. There's no time you have shook us off your shoulders. Your neck has been a place of safety. Oh, yes. It has been a place we have been hiding on. We have been climbing on, oh God. Even in our imperfection. And you have helped us to see beyond our height. To be taller than our opposition. To be taller than our challenges. Father, we still climb on that shoulder even this afternoon that we will see farther beyond what have Lord been an opposition in our lives we have climbed on your shoulders this afternoon to see beyond our limitation to guess into the future to see the glory the beauty that lies ahead of us because when we can have a glimpse of it Lord we draw strength by it thank you father for the lives that you are set to transform via this session. Father, you know it is not any man that your people are coming to seek. It is you that we have converted here to seek. And because it is you, Lord, I know there is no expectation that will be disappointed. Receive all the glory, mighty God. 
In Jesus' great name, we have prayed. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Good afternoon. Good morning. Good evening, depending on where you're tuning in from. It is with great joy in my heart that I welcome you to today's midday prayer. God has been doing new things in our lives in this uh, new season. And I know it will not elude you. You will surely share your testimony of the new things that God is doing in this season. And let me quickly remind you that new season means different things in the lives of people depending on what they desire in their lives. To a sick person, a new season means she or he is receiving their healing. To someone that has been pain, emotionally tortured, physically, you know, disorganized, a new season or a new thing is that God is rearranging what perhaps close associates, friends might have disorganized in their lives. By all means, be rest assured that you are among those that will testify of the new things that God is doing in this season. We've been having a great time, in case you're just tuning in for the first time. God's servant, Mumilabi, had, we had a powerful session with her last Wednesday. She said, woman, put up a fight. Put up a fight. And I'm sure many have been putting up fights where they desire to see a new season in their lives. She shared with us about the daughters of Zelophar, how they put up a fight and what has never been before began with them. I want you to know that the Bible actually made us understand that everything that is written in the Bible is for our examples. When we read them, they are not just stories. We read them so that we can draw strength and then uh, build our faith by it and begin to uh, uh, position ourselves so that we can also testify even more testimonies than what has happened before. So I'm excited that you've already tuned in for today's uh, Travel of Hana midday prayer session. If you indeed care for your friends, share this broadcast. You are believing God that uh, there is someone you've always desired to see her life better. Share this broadcast. Invite her via the link so that she can, he or she can connect and be part of today's midday prayer. Praise the Lord. Now I can see many people online. Joy from Nairobi, Juliet Idagiza, and just testimony. Mommy Labi is right here with me in the studio. Uh, Dionte is also here in the studio. You are all welcome. I saw Pastor Jane connected very early for today's midday prayer. Pastor Jane, you're welcome. All of you are welcome. God bless you, angels. She said she had already shared the broadcast. Praise the Lord. Uh, today, we'll be looking at still in our season. Rita Mkoni, all the way from UK. We missed you on this platform. You're welcome back. Praise the Lord. Today, we'll be looking at a topic I captioned, Lord of Aton. We are still in our new season. So this is a subtopic. We'll be asking the Lord today to overturn that Lord overturn someone shared her testimony she's sister J.I. I abbreviate her name God overturned a situation in the life of her daughter the daughter have suffered for quite some time she didn't indicate for how many years but the daughter had been challenged with her health she said allergies asthmatic attack the, she, she, she stopped feeding her with proteins and so many other things, but to no avail. She actually sent in a video, a picture of the child, how, you know, disfigured she becomes whenever she's attacked. And one of the days she tuned in on this platform and I was talking about uh, sharing the testimony about how God turned the situation around in the life of my daughters that battled with asthmatic attack from an early age how we were restricted, what to eat, what not to, to feed her with. How God overturned that situation and gave her a testimony. She was right online that day. It was not a coincidence. She keyed in that day and she told God that, Lord, this situation must be turned around by your finger. And God did it for her. Today we stand to return the glory to 
God alone that overturned that situation. She said that was the very last time that her daughter ever had that challenge. Could you be there and God has done something in your life or in the life of your husband or your children? Please send in your testimony so that we can return all the glory to God. To him alone be all the glory. Hallelujah. She's saying that proudly this is my testimony. Amen. The Lord bless you, Sister Juliet. Like I said, today we'll be looking at a subtopic on our new season caption, Lord Overturn. I would like to begin by saying that major event in the lives of people, including you and I, will always require an atmosphere. Nothing happens by chance. Everything you see happen, especially when it ends in testimony, is orchestrated by the atmosphere that is created by that individual that desires such event in their lives. While I was preparing, I look at the life of Jehoshaphat, talking about uh, three kings. I think the kings of Edom, of Judah, and uh, of, uh, of, uh, of Israel, if I, I'm not mistaken, in the book of Second Kings, chapter 3. A time came that they needed to ambush the, the Moabite. They went to, to fight in Moab. And Jehoshaphat was on that trip. The king of Edom was on that trip. And along the way, they got confused. The Bible says they, are, they were, let me just, Second Kings chapter 3, from verse, uh, let me just read from verse 12. And Jehoshaphat said, the word of the Lord is with him. Or oh, let me quickly go back to read from verse, uh, verse 6. And the king of Joram went out to Samaria at the same time and numbered all Israel. And he went and sent Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, saying, The king of Moab had rebelled against me. Will thou go with me against Moab to battle? And he said, I will go up. I am as thou art, my people as thy people, and my horses as thy horses. And he said, Which way shall we go? And he answered, The way through the wilderness of Edom. So the king of Israel went, and king of Judah, and king of Edom, and they fetched a compass of seven days' journey, and there was no water. At that time, they were already tired. They were thirsty. The Bible says there was no water. For seven days, there was no, a journey of seven days, there was no water for the host and for the cattle that followed them. That means the water to refresh them was not available. The water to refresh their cattle was not available. And the king said, alas, the king of Israel said, the Lord had called these three kings together to deliver them into the hands of Moab. But Joseph had said, is there not here a prophet of the Lord that we may inquire of the Lord? Joseph had was assuring that that is not the end of this situation. Is there no prophet here that we should inquire from the Lord? And then one of the servants of the king said that there is surely a prophet. And they were referring to Elisha. And in verse 13, uh, verse 12, and Joshua said, The word of the Lord is with the king of Israel. And Joshua and the king of Edom went down to him. And Elisha said to the king of Israel, What have I to do with thee? What have I to do with thee? Get thee to the prophet of thy father and to the prophet of thy mother, so on and so forth. And the king of Israel said unto him, Nay, for the Lord had called these three kings together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. And Elisha said, As the Lord of hosts liveth, before whom I stand surely, were it not that I regard the presence of Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, I will not look towards thee, nor see thee. But now, that was the king saying, but now Elisha said to them, as a result of what you are asking me to do, I need to prepare an atmosphere. Bring me a minstrel. And it came to pass when the minstrel played that the hand of the Lord came upon Elisha. And he said, thus said the Lord, make this valley to be full of ditches. Thus said the Lord, you shall not see wind, neither shall you see rain. But the valley shall be filled with water, what you have been in lack of. He said, the valley shall be full of water that you will be able to drink, both you and your cattle. Praise the Lord. Now, before 
the termination of that first, the state they were, Elisha said to them, an atmosphere needs to be created. I want us to understand that the atmosphere you create goes a long way to determine the kind of presence you attract. There's an atmosphere you create that you bring God. If new season takes God, it also means to overturn a situation takes God. New season takes God because in Isaiah, he told us in Isaiah 43, he said, behold, I will do a new thing. A new thing can never be in view without the involvement of God. Turning around of situation is doing a new thing that can never be in view without the involvement of God. And if God will be involved, an atmosphere must be created. Praise the Lord. Before I came for this midday prayer, something happened to me that disorganized me. I was not happy. I was so angry. I was not happy. And I realized the more I settled at the state I was, there was an atmosphere I was creating. And that atmosphere was depriving me of the presence of God. The atmosphere I was creating was depriving me of access. I couldn't. I knew what I was about to talk about, but everything evaporated. I couldn't pick anything. And this tells me how many times we unconsciously create an atmosphere that attracts a presence which is not of God, thereby depriving us of our turnaround, thereby depriving us of our new season. I had to address myself. I did what I needed to do. And as soon as I did it, I felt relief in my spirit. And before I knew it, the atmosphere changed. As soon as I did it, and the, the song I was listening, to the worship song that was no longer making meaning in my life began to make meaning as soon as I created that atmosphere there was a sudden turnaround I'm speaking to someone here perhaps God allowed what happened to me to pass a message to someone we are believing God or we are set for a new season but the question is what kind of atmosphere are you preparing what kind of atmosphere? Is it an atmosphere that will scatter what God has been trying to arrange? Is it an atmosphere that will disorganize the new things that God has been trying to do in your life? Or it is an atmosphere that will make it, you know, worse than what it was? I want you to check your life. What have you carried in your heart that haven't allowed a conducive atmosphere? The truth is this. New things takes God. A new season takes God. Therefore, anyone that will, that will celebrate, that will boast, that will testify of a new season or a turnaround must consciously create a conducive atmosphere. Conducive atmosphere that will not only bring God, but will power God to do what he intends to do. I did that. And I saw how God began overturning, began overturning. More than what I wrote down, I was actually getting late because he was just downloading for me, downloading for me. You know why? I was intentional to check the atmosphere that was around me. And God helped me and I was able to create a conducive atmosphere. I repeat, major event in a man's life requires an atmosphere. What kind of atmosphere are you carrying where you are right now? You could be at home. You could be in the office. What kind of atmosphere have you created around you? Is it an atmosphere that will power an overturning of that situation until it results to a testimony? What kind of atmosphere have you allowed? I want you to lift up your voice right now and pray with me. The Lord, I ventilate the environment, the atmosphere around me. I ventilate it. I ventilate it in the name of Jesus. If it is polluted, I ventilate it. I ventilate it. The atmosphere in your heart, the atmosphere where you're seated, the atmosphere of your home, the atmosphere of your relationship with your husband, 
if God will do a new thing in that relationship, you have to consciously and deliberately create a conducive atmosphere that will bring God. There is no new thing without God and there can never be God except in a conducive atmosphere. Many times we don't know that we, we, we create a very rowdy atmosphere around our lives. We create a very polluted atmosphere around our life that dispels the presence of God, that brings a strange presence instead of aligning what God has begun. That presence begins to scatter. That presence begins to mess up. That presence begin to spoil what God has begun. I want you to go ahead and clear every atmosphere unconsciously that you might have created around your relationship, around your, your home. What kind of atmosphere is it that has been ruling? What kind of atmosphere? What presence has that atmosphere brought? If God will overturn that situation until it becomes new, until glory is seen in it, you have a responsibility of making the atmosphere better. What kind of atmosphere have you created in your working environment? Is it an atmosphere that will usher in a new thing, the, the new thing you've been waiting for? Lord, I ventilate my atmosphere today in the name of Jesus Christ. I ventilate my atmosphere today in the name of Jesus. When your atmosphere is ventilated, it dispels a strange, you know, it dispels a strange presence, you know, in the negative that has been, that haven't allowed the presence of God to take preeminence in your life, that haven't allowed the presence of God to do what he intends to do. Do. Go ahead wherever you are, begin to declare, I ventilate my atmosphere. I ventilate my atmosphere. If God will do a new thing in that business, the atmosphere must be well ventilated. Until it is ventilated, it cannot be conducive for God. And until it is conducive for God, there can never be an overturning. Permit me to say, what has remained has remained because of the state of the atmosphere that has been. You can even carry your Bible in your hand and you pretend to be reading but the atmosphere isn't conducive for God to overturn anything while I was seated I had my iPad in my hand I was literally flipping through that I'm reading but there was nothing that was connected I couldn't pick anything because that atmosphere was terrible it was not an atmosphere that would host God I'm speaking to someone here today God wants to do a new thing in your life, but what is the state of your atmosphere? What is the state of your atmosphere? Is it an atmosphere that will allow him to walk without interruption? Is it an atmosphere that will allow him to finish what he has begun? Is it an atmosphere that will cause him to overturn and overturn and overturn and return the glory to his name? I ventilate my atmosphere. In the name of Jesus, I ventilate my atmosphere in the precious name of Jesus Christ. A new season is a time when God overturns situations in the lives of his people. In Ezekiel chapter 27 and verse 21, he said, I will overturn. I will overturn. I will overturn it. He said, until it comes, whose right it is and it will be given. While I was preparing, this word came to me that it is not just a time that God overturns situation in the lives of his people. It is also a time when God identifies your concern. When God identifies your concern and it draws his attention to you. A new season is also a time when your concerns are identified by God. <laughs> Listen to me. Many times men identify your concerns and when they identify your concerns, they, 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 they give it to you as a name. They give it to you as a name. If I may ask you, the woman with the issue of blood, did you ever know her name? There was no any other name that that woman was known with apart from her situation. 
A new season is a time that God identifies with your concern. And then that concern pulls him to you. That concern draws him closer. That concern, you know, causes him not to rest until your case is sorted. I want us to read the book of Luke chapter 13. You will look at what happened to one woman. How her concern was identified by God. In Luke chapter 13, I read from verse 10. A new season is a time when, you're, when your concern is identified. And then finally, the attention of God is drawn to you. In Luke chapter 13, the Bible says in verse 10, And as he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath, and behold, there was a woman, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity. Let me read it from the message translation. I like the way it is written. Luke chapter 13. I read from verse 16 in the message translation. The Bible says, Luke chapter 13 from verse 10. He was teaching in one of the meetings, meeting places on the Sabbath. There was a woman present, so twisted. She was present, but she was so twisted. That means he identified her concern and missed the entire crowd. It doesn't matter how many of us are online right now. God had identified the concern of that woman that was twisted. The Bible says he was teaching and he identified the concern of one woman. She was so twisted and bent over with arthritis that she couldn't even look up. <laughs> that woman couldn't look up because of how twisted she was. But God, Jesus, identified with her concern because it was a time for her turnaround. Because it was a time for a new thing to be done in her life. Because it was her new season. Jesus identified with her concern. The Bible says she was so twisted and she was bent over and she couldn't even look up. She had been afflicted with this for 18 years. A new season is a time that God identifies with what has afflicted you, with what has twisted you, with what have disfigured you. It is a time that God's attention, that God gets attracted and his entire attention comes all over you as a result of something that has been of a great concern in your life. I'm sure among many that are online, there could be something that has been of great concern in your life. Maybe maritally, maybe ministerially. It could even be in your health like this woman. For 18 solid years, she had a major concern. Wherever she stood, people that knew her, knew her with that concern. But there was no one that got attracted to her. There was no one that fixed their eyes on her. The Bible says when Jesus saw her, can somebody lift their voice where they are and say, Oh Lord, see me. Oh Lord, see me. As soon as he saw her, Lord, see me and undo whatever have twisted my life. Undo whatever have twisted. If there be anything, listen to me, destiny can be twisted. Diabolically, it can be twisted. There is no one that alive as his desired end with a twisted destiny. You'll be lifting your voice. A turn around, a new season is that time that what has been a concern, what have twisted your life. Ah, Makiti Bragonda Lia Hande Melutaya. Oh Lord, see me. Oh Lord, see me, see my children, see me, just like you cited that woman. Oh Lord, see me and do whatever have twisted, whatever have the enemy have twisted in your life. Tell God to see you, to untie you, to undo it. When Jesus saw that woman twisted, he was not comfortable. Her concern became his concern. He identified with her concern. And then he came right there to untie, to undo whatever have twisted her. 
Oh Lord, see me. Whatever have twisted my life, tell God whatever have twisted you. Career wise, and people are going forward. Instead of going forward, you can't. You are just stagnated. Whatever have twisted me in life. Ora me kuzi bayang and the mito baya zapa kata le kusonto lekara le kusia. She was not just twisted. The Bible says she was bent over. She was denied certain privileges, even though she was meant to enjoy. Listen to me. When the enemy twists the destiny of an individual, certain privileges are withdrawn. When the enemy twists the destiny of an individual, they are confined. Where they are meant to be a voice, they remain an echo. When the enemy twists the destiny of an individual, where there's meant to be a solution, they become a trouble, they become a burden. This woman gradually became a burden because something was twisted in her life. When the enemy twists a destiny as the name is twisted, nothing at all, nothing of glory, nothing of joy can be derived from it. Lift your voice and tell God to see you. What have you discovered that look twisted? Is it your children? Is it your marriage? Oh Lord, see me. If it is God you came to seek on this platform today, tell him, oh God, see me. I am not returning with this twisted story. I am not returning. Sometimes it is not just a destiny that is twisted. It could be a story that people have twisted and twisted. And it looks so, you know, a, a perfect fit in your life. Perfect fit in your life. I actually wrote, sometimes in life you find yourself to be a victim in a situation that you knew nothing about. Do you know how many times people have become victims of situations that they knew nothing about? They are walking, but things are twisted. They are laboring, but things are twisted. They are putting up all they can, but things are twisted. Oh Lord, see me. Your eyes that sighted that woman that was twisted and that was bent over. Oh God, see me in the name of Jesus. Whatever I have been twisted, oh Lord, see me. Listen to me. When a destiny is twisted, when an individual destiny is twisted, you realize the moment they arrive in sin, they are always told it is finished. When it is about to be their turn, at the age of their breakthrough, at the eve of their miracle, they are told it is finished. Why must it finish when it is your turn? You keep on saying it is a coincidence. Someone uh, humorously said something that he knew a man that any time that man attains a special occasion, gatherings, whether weddings, birthday celebrations, as they are distributing the drinks and whatever, when they get to him, the dreams must finish. Not once, not twice. Why must it be him? Why must it be him? Lord, see me. Lord, see me. Ah, ma picota lande kosi brayandaya. If that woman was okay, twisted, Jesus would have left her. But when he saw her, Reba Kandaya, he identified with her concern. He knew it ought not to be so. He said, when Jesus saw her, he called her over. He's calling someone over here today because all the raw materials, what it takes to untie what the enemy has twisted over that marital destiny. Cry out, oh Lord, see me. Untie whatever has been twisted. I've been twisted by the enemy. The spirit of infirmity twisted this woman and she was bent over. She became irrelevant. She became a leku sipa and She became unproductive. She had a destiny to fulfill, but the spirit of infirmity twisted her, relegated her. Mazi bakata legosia for 18 solid years. I want you to count 18 years. A child that was given birth to is already in the university that is actually graduated from the university praise the lord that long period of time a life was twisted a destiny was wasted father i stand on this prayer altar today and i ask that lord see me father see me 
If there is a force, if there is a hand that twists destinies, if there is a force that twists to the po to the to the, to the point of bending, there is a hand from above. There is an eye from above that pays attention, that gets drawn, that gets identified with the concern of His people in today's midday prayer. God is identifying with that thing that have twisted you, that have bent your life, that have bent that marriage what is that force that have twisted that relationship the relationship between you and your husband there is a force that have twisted it god that saw that woman lord see me lord see me lord see me your conception when god overturns whatever is twisted is untied when god overturns whatever is twisted is untied when god overturns whatever is twisted is on time today is the day of the lord this is the day of your deliverance this is the day of judgment against anything this is the day of judgment you will no longer be a victim of situation that you know nothing about in the name of jesus our children i want you to declare the seed of my womb my children will no longer be victims of situations that they know nothing about when a life is twisted one of the things that happens over and over that keeps occurring on and on is that they keep becoming victims of what they knew nothing about. Take your time after today's midday prayer and read the book of Second Samuel. Second Samuel chapter 4 from verse 1. Listen, Mephibosheth did nothing to become a lame. He wasn't born lame. He, become, he became a victim of people. He became a, a, a victim of someone else's error. There are times when a destiny is somehow twisted. People become victims of someone else's error. He was not born lame. Read that account. When the nurse was trying to escape, the Bible says that was how that young child that was born with complete legs, that was what happened. And then he became lame. He became a victim of what he knew nothing about. The Bible talks about a man in the book of John chapter 9. In John chapter 9, while I was reading it in the message translation, the disciples of Jesus came to him and they asked him, John chapter 9 from verse, from verse 1, Oh Lord, see me. Oh Lord, see me. Oh Lord, I think that will be the, 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 the caption today. Oh Lord, see me. Until God sees you, ah, your situation remains. Oh Lord, see me. Father, see me. See me. If you have eyes and you see things, God have eyes, he sees better. The Bible says in John chapter 9 from verse 1, walking down the street, Jesus saw, <laughs> he is an expert in seeing. Yes. Remember I say a new season is also a time that what has been a concern that God begins to get drawn his attention to what has been a concern in your life. Jesus saw a man, Lord, see me. <clears throat> this afternoon, Father, see me. Jesus saw a man blind from birth. His disciple asked, Rabbi, who sinned? This man or his parent causing him to be born blind? Let me tell you, when men see you, <laughs> when they see anything twisted, there was something already twisted in the life of this man. He became a victim of what he knew nothing about. He was born blind. That means even from the mother's womb, he came out blind. What did he do to be blind? He did nothing. He became a victim of what he knew nothing about. When a life is twisted, when a destiny is twisted, it is common for those who see such destiny begin to pass their comment. I am sure there is someone listening to me. People have looked at you and they have said all that they can say concerning you. That's why today you can't close your mouth. Tell God to see you. The Lord see me. Father, you know I have been a victim of what I knew nothing about. Father, see me. Oh, Lord, see me. Jesus saw him. They said, is it his parent that 
had seen, they began to analyze. There must be something that has happened with his parent. Either it is him that seen or it is his parent. What happened that he's born blind? Jesus said, you are asking the wrong question. I know because he is in this place today. Jesus is answering as many that have been analyzing your situation. Oh, you know, she has not given birth because she, uh, she, she, she aborted many pregnancies while she was single. Jesus is saying to them, what you're saying is wrong. Jesus said to them, when Jesus sees you, he begins to address every mouth, every tongue that have been lifted against you contrary to his will. Jesus said, you are asking the wrong question. I could hear him say to someone on your behalf, you are asking the wrong question. I could hear him say to someone on your behalf, you have been going, you, your analysis are wrong concerning my daughter, concerning my son. The analysis is wrong. He said you are asking the wrong question. You are looking for someone to blame. You will no longer be looked for for that blame. You will no longer be a victim of what you knew nothing about. He said you are looking for someone to blame. <coughs> there is no such cause effect here. He said look instead for what God can do. Look instead for what God can do can do when God's attention is drawn to your concern to drawn to your situation solution must be brought he said look only look instead for what God can do when God's attention is drawn to your concern he doesn't analyze why you are the way you are he doesn't talk about why you are the way you are when god's attention is drawn to your concern one notable thing that happened is that solution must be birthed when god's attention was drawn to this man that was born blind solution was bad he became things overturned and overturned and he was all shut into a new season the man that didn't see before began to see when god's attention you were was, was when god's attention was on the concern of that woman that was twisted solution was birth the bible say he looked at her and he said to her ought not this daughter of abraham ought not this woman be made whole and immediately the force that twisted her lose his grip over her destiny i stand here in the name of jesus christ on this altar of travel of hannah on this altar of prayer whatever has twisted the force that is behind the twisted occurrences in your life i command every force i command every hand to lose their grip in the name of jesus christ that woman was set free immediately what twisted her was overpowered because jesus saw her i am announcing to someone today because jesus have cited you whatever have twisted you before whatever has bent you over before have lost his grip already over your life in the name of jesus christ lift your voice the Lord let my connection with you on this altar of prayer validate my freedom. Let it validate my turnaround. That my connection with God that turned the situation of this woman. Let my connection with God on this altar of prayer at this midday. Let it validate my turnaround around let it validate my new season let it validate my change of story the woman had a change of story because her connection with god her connection with god validated her new status oh god let my connection with you let my connection with you on this altar of prayer validate my change of story validate my change of story let it validate my turnaround in the name of jesus let it validate you know what he says he said no one comes to him and he chases them away 
he will in no wise cast us away. Let my connection with God on this prayer altar today validate my turnaround. Let it validate my change of story. Let it validate my new season. In the name of Jesus, lift your voice and begin to make that declaration. Let my connection with God, my connection with God, the God whose attention is already drawn to my concern, Father, let my connection with you validate my new season. Let it validate my turnaround. Let it validate my change of story in the name of Jesus. Let it validate the new name that your mouth will give me. Let it validate the new name that God's mouth will give you. Lift your voice and begin to declare that your connection with God on this this prayer altar today, let it validate, let it validate. I stand on the behalf of my children. Lord, I stand in the gap for my children that my connection with God on this prayer altar today, let it validate their change of story. Academically, let it validate their change of story. Spiritually, let it validate their change of story. In the name of Jesus, wherever you are, you are a mother, place your hands on your womb. In the name of Jesus, you carry them for nine solid months. That Lord, my connection with you on this altar of prayer today, whatever have twisted in their life, whatever the enemy might have twisted, my connection with God on this prayer altar today, validate, validate the change of story in their career. It validates a change of story in the marital destiny of my children. My connection with you on this prayer altar, validate a change of story, validate a new beginning. My connection with God on this prayer altar, validate a turnaround in the life of my husband. Go ahead and begin to declare. Remember the man is the head. When you look at the head, the eyes are on the head, the nose on the head, the mouth on the head, the ears on the head. That means God entrusted the man with the ability to see, to smell for the family, to hear for the family, to speak for the family. What happens when such head is twisted? That means the entire family will be driven to an unknown destination. But no more. Because you stood on this altar. Go ahead and begin to pray for your husband. The Lord, my connection with you on this prayer altar, on the behalf of my husband. Lord, it validated a turnaround. As a career man, it validated his turnaround in ministry. Lord, a new story in the name of Jesus. A new season for my husband in ministry. A new season in his work with you. A new season. My connection with God on this prayer altar today. It validates a new beginning. A new beginning. A new chapter is hereby open for my husband in business in ministry in health a new chapter is hereby open my connection with god on this prayer altar today it validates a new season it validates his turnaround it validates a new beginning thank you father lift your voice and give god praise appreciate him and exalt his name because he saw you he has seen you oh lord i thank you i give you all the glory jesus because you cited me i appreciate you because you have untied whatever lord have been twisted you have untied it you have untied it whatever has been bent over lord you have lifted it by your own hand I give you all the glory. I give you all the glory. Whatever has bent over, whether it is your business that has bent over, that has not been visible again, until that business is visible, there cannot be an... Uh, 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 there cannot be a trooping in of clients, but now what has been bent over has been lifted by the hands of God. Give him all the glory. Lord, I thank you. Is it your help that was bent over? Is it your help that was twisted before you came online? God saw you. He cited you. He has untied whatever was the root cause of that twist. I am now standing straight. I am now walking straight. I am taller than any situation that was before I came for today's midday. I give you glory. My connectivity with God have validated my new season. My connectivity with God validates my turnaround. It validates my new story. It validates my new song. I don't care the song you sang before you came. You know, there are songs you sing out of pain. You are not singing it to feed yourself. You are singing it to feed your pain. <laughs> Hallelujah. There are songs you sing when you are emotionally down and tortured. You are not singing it because you want to sing it. You are not singing it to lift your spirit. 
but you're thinking it to feed your pain, to continue to pity, to pity yourself. <laughs> you are living here with a new song because your connection with God validates your new song. It will no longer be song you're singing, you know, to have a pity party around yourself. No, you're singing that song because God has done a new thing in your life. Amen. You're singing that new song because you were so bold to create an atmosphere that powered your turn around. Amen. You will surely share your testimony Amen. in Jesus' precious name. Father, we give you thanks. We give you glory. Yes, what a wonderful time in your presence. Yes, All down that hear it, prayer. Thank you for hearing us. Thank you, thank you for validating our new songs, our new story, our new season. We give you all the glory because we will surely return with our testimonies here in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Listen to me. God will validate nothing in case you are listening and you are not born again. He will validate nothing except you intentionally recognize him in your life. When you recognize him, you now allow God to cite what has been a concern. And if there's anything that has been a concern among others, I'm sure it is the weight of sin. Time has come for you to lay that weight of sin on the altar of prayer, to hand it over to God. That is a burden that you cannot carry. So lift your voice with me and say, Lord Jesus, I run to you today. Father, I ask that you come and take charge of my life. The weight of sin is sinking me. I know it is only you that will deliver me. I know you died for me. So Jesus, come into my life. Deliver me from the, 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 the enticement of sin. I renounce the work of darkness by this confession of faith. I am now born again. Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. Amen. Congratulations, beloved. If you pray this prayer, you are now a child of God. As simple as it is. The address displayed is our contact. Please reach out either by call or text message. Feel free and send in your message. Uh, you, you'll be guided to where the church is located. I assure you that you will not regret this decision that you have made. Don't feel ashamed. But in case this location is far from where you are, there are other Bible-believing churches. Just walk in and share this encounter with the pastors. They will show you what you need to do. Hallelujah. And for those of us that tune in for today's midday prayer, I want to assure you again that Jesus saw you. Not because he hasn't been seeing you before, but this time around, he saw you differently because that thing that has been a concern drew his attention to you. And because his attention has been drawn, what twisted to the extent of bending has been made straight. Welcome to your new season. Things have already turned around. Yes. Go out of today's session with this mindset, with this mentality. Don't go again like someone that has been twisted or bent over. Go with your shoulder high. Go with your voice. You are no longer an echo. I don't know who I'm talking to. You have suffered intimidation. You are no longer an echo. You carry a voice that your generation is waiting to hear. Begin from where you are because you are already been untied. Nothing is bending you over again. I celebrate you in Jesus' name. It is time to honor God with our offering. Praise the Lord. Is God in need? God isn't in need. But he has given us the avenue to give offerings so that through the offerings we give, he multiply the seed that we sow. Without a seed in our hands, we can never boast of multiplication. What is that seed that you have been keeping back and God has been asking you to lay it down? It is the gateway to your financial breakthrough. Don't keep it back. A seed kept back is useless because it can never bring increase. Neither can it reproduce itself. But a seed that you let go by faith into the earth, after a while, you will not know how God of increase breathes on it and then it brings more than what you have ever given up. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, thank you. Lord, I know that a seed kept can never increase, can never multiply. It remains a souvenir. It cannot bring increase into our lives. But a seed that we sow into the kingdom, it may leave our hands, but it has not left our future. It goes there in a multiplied state to wait for us. Mighty God, receive our offering in today's midday prayer. We are no longer bent over financially. We are no longer twisted financially. We celebrate what you have done because you have cited us. We are made straight by your word to the glory of your name. Thank you, mighty God. 
In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Thank you again for tuning in for today's midday prayer. It has been a wonderful session in his presence. Oh Lord, see me. He has seen you. I look forward to seeing you again on Wednesday. In this uh, season that we are in, remember it is a new season. Don't say I attended last Friday, last Wednesday, last Monday. No, it is a new season. God is unfolding to us day by day, hour by hour, something new that will bath your long-awaited testimony. Have a wonderful week in Jesus' name.